This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Greetings and welcome to A Touch of Grace with yours truly, Pastor G, the pastor of the Greater Grace Church in Maryville, Indiana. Listen, I want you to get your Bibles, get your pens, get your apps, uh, get your paper ready because there is a word that the Lord has placed upon my heart that I want to share with you on today. Uh, Luke chapter 22 talks about uh, being sifted. Have you ever been just agitated, frustrated, just going through and it seems like it's a never ending cycle? You have the testimony literally. If it ain't one thing, it's another. In Luke chapter 22, Jesus is talking to his disciples, Simon in particular, and he tells him, Simon, behold, Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But Simon, I got some good news for you. I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brother. My sisters and my brothers, I've come to find out that sifting often precedes a shifting. So you can't get shifted until you go through some sifting. Listen, before I get too excited, let's listen to what the Lord has to say to us today. Amen. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one, no one else like you. Shall we pray? If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, and speak through me. You can use anything, Lord. Please feel free to use me in the name of Jesus Christ. The crucified and risen one, we pray and we thank God and all God's people said, amen. amen. We reverence God who is our Father, Jesus, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, man, our brother to our executive pastor and to all of our ministerial staff that is present here today, to our deacons and our officers and to each and every one of you, my father's children, even those that are in our cyber sanctuary right now. There is a word from the Lord found in the gospel as recorded by St. Luke. St. Luke, the chapter is 22. The verse of commencement is 28. And the verse of conclusion is 32. Luke chapter 22, beginning with verse number 28, reads as follows. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I point unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I want to read verse 31 and 32 again. It says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I want to talk from a subject which simply says, from reckless agitation to complete transformation. From reckless agitation to complete transformation. Um, story goes about a shipwrecked man that managed to reach an uninhabited island. There to protect himself against uh, the various elements, and to safeguard the few possessions that he had. He carefully built him a little hut, uh, which he constantly and prayerfully scanned the horizon for the approach of a ship one day. On one evening, as he returned after a search from food, he was uh, terrified to find that the hut that he built was completely enveloped in flames. Yet by divine mercy, this hard affliction was changed into a mighty advantage. Um, early the next morning, he 
woke up and there was a ship anchored right in the same place where he had to lay his head that night. As he woke up, the captain of the ship stepped off the ship and said, we saw your smoke signal and came to see about you. My sisters and my brothers, I want to let you know that in this life, we all will encounter some troubles and some trials. In this thing called life, you will have some ups and some downs. In this thing called life, you will encounter and experience adversity on every level. The reality is that for every level you reach, there's another devil you're going to have to deal with. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Here it is. God has a way of taking us through ups and downs, ins and outs and troubles because he's trying to refine us and get the best out of us. All oh, the reality is that many of us would not be praying like we pray now had not COVID-19 surfaced. Many of us would not even want to come to church like we want to come now had it not been for COVID-19. Many of us would not even be tuning in to a cyber sanctuary or a worship service live stream on a Sunday morning had it not been for something called coronavirus. Here it is. God has a way of sending adversity in our lives because he wants to get our attention and I want to tell somebody that it does not matter uh, what God has to do to get your attention he will he will get your attention I want to tell somebody, I want to tell somebody, I know you've been in church all your life. I know you've been hanging around the body of Christ all your life. I know you've been hanging around the people of God all your life. I know you've been singing Zion songs for a long time. I know you've been praying Zion's prayers for a long time, but I got some good news for you. You are not exempt from going through your trouble. You, you are not exempt from going through some agitation and some sifting and some being shaken. But the good news that I got for you is that the same God that takes you into the is the same God that will bring you out of the sifting. I wonder, is there anybody besides me that don't mind testifying that in this life uh, you have been sifted sometime. In this life, it has got rough and tough sometime. In this life, you have wanted to throw in the towel sometime, but you realize and you recognize that if God be for me, uh, he's more than I wish I had some help uh, that don't mind helping me preach today. If God be for me, uh, he's more than the world against me. It is in this text, Luke chapter 22, that we find Simon Peter is being made to understand that he is in fact about to be tested. Oh, uh, sometimes, sometimes you, 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 you look at life and sometimes your tests show up unexpected and unannounced. But in this text, we see that Jesus is being the gentleman that he is. He tells Simon, Simon, you about to go through something. You are about to experience some heavy hardship. You are about to go through some ups and some downs. Uh, how many of us don't mind testifying that we would better be able to handle our trials uh, if we knew exactly when they were going to show up? Uh, but I want to tell somebody that troubles and trials just don't seem to have good manners because the reality is uh, if it ain't one thing, it's another. You get your job in order, then your bills pass due. You get the family straight, then everybody else going crazy. I mean, if it ain't one thing, it's, an, it's just a con constant battle. It's a constant in and out, up and down, mountain highs and valley lows. If you ain't crying yourself to sleep, you on the verge of cussing somebody. I mean, if it ain't one thing, it is another. But the good news is, is that we serve a God that will not just tell us when trouble is coming, but he'll stick right there with us in the midst of our trouble. I believe, I believe somebody under the sound of my voice does not mind testifying that, that your God and my God has been with you in the midst of everything that you have faced. 
Well, 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 if you don't want to put your business all out there on front street, come in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They will have me to tell you that not only will he take you to the fiery furnace, but he'll get in the fiery furnace with you. Come here, Daniel. They, Daniel will have me to tell you, I got caught praying three times a day, but what got me in trouble got me out of trouble because the Lord let me sleep fast on some good cushioning that night in the lion's den. Is there anybody that don't mind testifying that God will take you through sifting before he start to shift you. I feel like preaching today. I feel like preaching today. Here it is on the hills of Jesus sitting down with the disciples. We see that he has now just instituted the Lord's Supper. And now he tells uh, the disciples that one of you is going to betray me. Somebody that's sitting at this table breaking bread with us is going to, in a few hours, turn around and betray me. Here it is. They're looking one to another and they're asking the question, Lord, is it I? Jesus said, he that dippeth his hand in the dish with me, uh, the same shall betray me. So go ahead and do what you got to do. Here it is. I want to tell somebody that betrayal does not always come from without, uh, but sometimes the one that's going to betray you is right up under your nose. Uh, betrayal does not always happen uh, from your enemies, uh, but sometimes uh, it comes from those that pose as your friends. Uh, they're not really friends. Uh, they're really called frenemies uh, because they look at you and they really don't like uh, the way that you're being blessed because you do understand that the devil don't like it because you've been blessed. Uh, and so betrayal does not always come from the outside, but sometimes betrayal will come from the inside. After they hear the news concerning the betrayal, there is now a controversy because they're saying, now, uh, Jesus, I'm not going to be the one that's going to betray you. So when you don't, when you come into your kingdom, can you allow me to sit at your right hand and at your left hand? There is a controversy about who is going to be the greatest. But Jesus says the reality is that if you want to be great, you got to be first the servant of all. If you want to be high, you got to know what it feels like to be low. If you really want to go ahead, you got to know what it feels like to be behind sometime. He said, if you really want to be a great one in the kingdom, he said, you got to first serve down here on earth. Here it is. Jesus looks at them and he says, if you want to know what a good example of greatness looks like, he said, just look, look at me. He said, I, the son of man, did not come to be served, but I came to serve serve. He's trying to tell them that now since you have gotten this lesson on greatness, he said, and because of who you are and because of what you have done in these last three years of my earthly ministry, he says now in verse number 28, he said, you are the ones that have stuck with me through my earthly ministry and I'm going to record, I'm going to honor your faithfulness. I'm going to honor you by allowing you uh, to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. In other words, uh, he said, first you got to have the cross, uh, then you're going to deal with the crown. That's why the songwriter put it like this. If you can't stand to be talked about sometime, if you think you should always be up and never down, no cross, no crown. A lot of people want the crown but don't want to bear the cross. Jesus begins to talk to Simon and, 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 and he looks at Simon, but while he's looking at Simon, he's really speaking to all of his disciples. Um, and he says, I want to let you know something tonight. We have been sitting at this table. I have revealed that somebody at this table is going to betray me. I've given you a lesson on what it means to be great. He said, but then, now I got to let you know this piece of information. He says, Satan wants to have you. Yes, yeah, Satan wants to have you that he may sift you. I see four things in the text uh, that we'll discuss 
and then we'll be headed out to enjoy our Memorial Day weekend. Right. Sifting reveals, first of all, your position. Somebody says your position. Anyone that is close to Jesus is a prime candidate for experiencing some suffering. And in fact, the closer you get to the Lord, the greater the attack will be on your life. Je Jesus tells the disciples that, that since you've been so close to me and because you have stuck with me through various trials, you are now become a target for Satan. My sisters and my brothers, the, re the reality is, is that uh, uh, you can't just hang with everybody. No, no, you, you can't be in everybody's company. Because, see, everybody will not understand the cost of your oil. See, see, some people, some people, some people only got water. But you got oil. And we all know that oil and water... It may appear to be trying to intermingle, but, but, but when it's all said and done, oil and water just don't mix. They trying to figure out why you doing what you doing, how you doing what you do. It's because you got oil on your life and they just got water on theirs. Is there anybody besides me that thank God for the oil that's been on your life? See, your oil is not cheap. You were crushed for this oil. You were bruised for this oil. You were attacked for this oil. Your character was assassinated for this oil. Do me a favor and point at your neighbor and say, my oil is not cheap yeah 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 you got to realize you got to realize that that your assignment won't be easy because your oil is not cheap in other words you can walk through life and when folk look at you trying to figure out why you still praise in the way you praise and why you still pray in the way you're praying, why it is that you're able to experience the favor of God the way you can experience his favor, you can look at them and say, I paid for this. I, I went through something for this. I, I, I encountered some stuff for this. I endured some stuff. I went through the fire for this because my oil is not cheap. You don't believe me? That's why Psalm 34 and 19 says, many are the affliction of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of him all. Paul even said in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly will I therefore glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor. If you're in a cyber sanctuary, I want you to get your fingers ready to type this. Elevation requires your separation yeah ele elevation requires separation here it is here it is here it is sifting reveals your position the closer I get to Jesus the more prone I am to be attacked by the enemy but then I kept reading as I got to verse number 31, I see that not only does sifting reveal your position, but secondly, sifting reveals Satan's plan. Satan's plan, Satan's plan. Um, because of your closeness to the Lord, <clears throat> we see that Satan has a desire to steal, kill, and destroy you. Jesus says, um, I want you to listen to me very closely. Satan has demanded to test each of you. And I want to let somebody know, let's understand my voice, uh, that, that it's good to know that we belong to such a powerful God that Satan got to get permission from God 
in order to test us. You don't believe me? Come here, Job. The Lord says, I, 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 was, I was looking around and Satan showed up one day. And I looked at Satan and said, man, where you come from? And Satan said, I, I've been going up and down, to and fro in the earth, seeking somebody that I can bother and mess with. And the Lord said, well, have you considered my servant, Job? He's an upright man. He's one that fears me, and he shuns the very appearance of evil. I mean, everything that one man could want, Job already has. And Satan said, well, the reason I can't get to Job is because you got your hand all over him. The Lord said, well, I'm so strong in my stance and my conviction about Job that I'm going to drop the hedge of protection, allow you to go in and bother him. You can touch his body, but you can't take his life. See, I want to tell somebody that even in the midst of your agitation, God will give Satan some parameters that he got to stay within. And the reason you ain't lost your mind yet is because the Lord has already given Satan permission to touch you but not take you out. Is there anybody on the sound of my voice that thank the Lord that Satan can touch you but he can't take you out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Satan, Satan wants, uh, Jesus to give him permission to, to touch each one of the disciples. He says, so Satan desires to have you, verse number 31, that he may sift you as wheat. Sifting, 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 sifting. Somebody say sifting. Sifting um, is defined as uh, the, the process of separating and retaining the coarse parts of flour, ashes, etc. with a sieve. Somebody say sieve. This process combines air uh, with the ingredient uh, being sifted, making it lighter and more uniform in texture, which improves the baking or food preparation process. If you have ever did any type of baking from scratch, not the stuff that I do out the box, but, but if you ever done any baking from scratch, you need something called a sifter. Now, this is kind of a new school sifter because it got a turn on. But an old school sifter, you just shake it. Yeah, yeah. And so, sifting... Uh, when you take flour, you deposit the flour into the top of the sifter. Now, there is some clumps and some lumps in the flour. But understand this. The sifter is going to get the flour just right so that it can be ready to go into the cake that's going to go in the oven. Because everything, good God Almighty, everything that the sifter holds back uh, is not good enough to go in the cake. Uh, and so this is what happens. Uh, the Lord allows you to go through some stuff, but, but in the midst of your sifting, he's refining you. He's improving you. You don't cuss like you used to cuss no more. You don't have the same desires that you used to have no more. You don't even hang around the same people you used to hang around no more. Because, check this out, what's left in the sieve of the sifter is not good enough or fine enough uh, to go into the cake. I still got some clumps in here. That, 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 that's, that's the stuff that the Lord uh, took out of you uh, while you were in your sifting process. Uh, that's the stuff that the Lord uh, said, I don't want this to be in, th in their new person, uh, so I'm going to leave it in their old being. And so check this out. So, so what he does is um, he allows us to go through the sifting process, um, and now we're fine. We're refined. 
we're improved because sifting, it gets us ready to go into something where we'll come out better. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to point at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm in the sifter right now. I'm in the sifter right now. Point at somebody else and say, I'm in the sifter right now. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Sifting is necessary. I know. I know. I know you wish you did not have to go through any types of of struggle, stress, and strain. I know if you had your way, you wouldn't deal with any type of sickness in your life. But check this out. Sifting is necessary. And the good news is, you're going to go in one way. I wish I had some help in the room. But you're going to come out another way. See, see, the good thing is, is that those that have been sifted in your life, your testimony is, sifting didn't kill me, it just improved me. Sifting didn't diminish my anointing, it refined my anointing. And see, some people will never understand where you are in life right now because they're still stuck where you left them. You need to leave them where they are and keep on going to where God has called you to be because your sifting is refining you. God has taken some stuff out of you because he knows where I'm trying to take you. You can't take all that baggage with you. You can't take all them immature people with you. You can't take all them immature attitudes and perspectives with you. Is there anybody in the room or in the cyber sanctuary that don't mind testifying that you headed somewhere and you understand that it's reckless agitation right now? But don't give up in your agitation because God got an assignment with your name on it. Somebody, somebody ought to thank God. Somebody ought to thank God for sifting. Because had it not been for some sifting in your life, you would still be rough around the edges. See, and some folks, some folks don't even know how to handle you now. Because uh, they're so accustomed to you uh, going through ups and downs and and losing your mind and ready to pop somebody off as soon as they come at you the wrong way. But, but the reality is, is that now you're not, you're not so rough around the edges anymore because the Lord then sifted some of that stuff out of you. Now, don't get me wrong. You still know how to use the words. You just don't use them as much as you used to use them. You still know how to do the stuff. You just don't do it as much as you used to do it because the Lord is steady improving you. The Lord is steady refining you. Do me a favor. Just point up toward heaven and say, they thank God for refining me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sif sifting, 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 sifting reveals your position. Sifting reveals Satan's plan. But third, uh, sifting reveals Jesus' prayer. It's right here in the text. Um, after he tells them that Satan desires to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, Jesus says, uh, verse number 32, the A clause, he said, but don't worry about it. I've already prayed for you. Now, now, somebody should have shouted right there. To know that you got somebody praying on your behalf. To, to know that, that you got somebody that, that's talking to the Father on your behalf. Here, here it goes. Jesus tells his disciples that, that Satan is coming after you. He said, and Peter, I know what's about to happen to you. Because if you read a few verses after uh, in this particular text, you, you see that, that Jesus tells Peter that uh, before the night is over and before the cock crows three times, you're going to be the one that's going to deny me. J J Jesus looks at Peter and Peter said, no, not me, Lord. I'm not, I'm not, me? Jesus says, Peter, before the cock crows three times, you're going to act like you don't even know me. He said, but understand this. I've already whispered a prayer on your behalf. And I wonder 
Is there anybody that thank God that somebody prayed for you? The reason you still here today is because somebody been praying. Uh-huh. The reason, the reason you ain't lost your mind yet and given up hope yet because somebody been praying to read the and check this out um, they ain't just start praying this year but you living on some stored up prayers uh, you living off of prayers that mama prayed for you and daddy prayed for you and grandmama and granddaddy prayed for you they may not be here with you physically anymore but they prayed for you and prayer makes me strong when I am weak uh, and keeps me marching on uh, he says I have prayed for you now check out the prayer that Jesus prays uh, Jesus does not pray that he would not be tempted or tested. That's not the prayer. But Jesus says, my prayer has been that in the midst of your testing and in the midst of your temptation, that your faith won't fail you. In other words, in other words, uh, Jesus says, understand this, your courage is going to fail. But I want to make sure that your faith don't fail you. Because faith allows you to continue to press on even in the midst of panic and in the midst of ups and downs of life. Faith allows you to continue to press on even when you don't see how you're going to pay your bills because you ain't got no money coming in and you realize and recognize that your faith kicks in because the job was the resource, but God has been your source. Faith kicks in when it seems as if all hope has been lost. And when the doctor says we've done all that we could do, you look at the doctor and say, thank you so much. But I know another doctor that ain't never lost a patient, ain't never lost a case. That's when your faith kicks in. He says, I prayed for you that your faith won't fail. And then when you're converted, strengthen your brother. I, I thank God that, that even though we may be on the devil's hit list, I thank God that we're on Jesus' prayer list. And I wish I had somebody that don't mind testifying that you thank God that he been praying for you. Even in times where you couldn't pray for yourself, he's been praying praying for you. even in times when you didn't know your, your, your left from your right he been praying even in times when you didn't know your night from day he was praying I thank God that I got that I got a big brother that talked to daddy on my behalf day in and day out do me a favor and just point at your neighbor and say big brother been praying yeah yeah big big brother Jesus he's been been praying the prayer for us, I, I told you that sifting reveals your position. Sifting reveals Satan's plan. Sifting reveals Jesus' prayer. But by the time I get to the B clause of verse number 32, I see that sifting reveals God's purpose. Yeah, yeah, here, here it is. It is God's purpose to allow us to go through our sifting moments so that we can come back and strengthen our brothers. It's right here in the text, verse 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen, yeah, uh-huh. I noticed a movement in verse number 32 that allowed me to get happy by my own doggone self. In verse number 31, I see Satan wants to have us so he can sift us as wheat. The A clause of verse number 32 says Jesus has prayed for us. But the B clause of verse 32 tells me that even though I've been sifted in 31, I've been prayed for in the A clause of 32, I'm going to come out in the B clause of verse 32. Is there anybody besides me that thank the Lord that even though you go in, you will come? out of this thing you will come out of this situation well do me a favor and point at your neighbor and say neighbor you gonna come out you gonna come out you gonna come out it is God's purpose that when we come out that we go and strengthen our brother sifting sifting will cause us to be 
converted. But when you are converted, you ought to have a new commitment to strengthening your brother. God's purpose is for me to be transformed by way of my agitation. And as I looked at the text today, I see that Luke chapter 22, between verse 28 through 32, it talks about reckless agitation. But then it gives us the complete transformation. And I got to leave you here on this morning when I tell somebody that 2020 has been a year of agitation. 2020 has been a year of sifting. 2020 has been a year of frustration. 2020 has been a year of irritation. But I got some good news for somebody under the sound of my voice today. I want to let you know that God will let you be agitated so you can come through a transformed individual. And I wonder, is there anybody in the room or in the cyber sanctuary that thank the Lord that he chose you to be sifted. He told you to go through some ups and downs. I'm feeling pretty good because I'm thinking about how the Lord had laid his hand on your life. How the Lord has touched you even in the midst of your sifting situation. Is there anybody in the room or in the cyber sanctuary that thank God that in the midst of your sifting, the Lord, oh shucks here now, the Lord has already prayed for you. Well, do me a favor and help me close this little message and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we've been sifted, but we survived. Is there anybody? in the room that thank the Lord that you got the testimony of my buddy Job that put it like this please be patient with me because God ain't through with me yet but when God gets through with me I shall good God Almighty I shall come forth as pure gold is there anybody here that thank the Lord that in the midst of being sifted, in the midst of going through, in the midst of ups and downs, God held you. God kept you. God made a way. Won't the Lord show up in the nick of time? Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that thank the Lord that through it all you still got joy through all the hell you've been through, through all the ups and downs you've been through, you still got joy and this joy that I have the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away am I right about it if I'm right let me hear you say yeah say yeah got to close but I want to tell you somebody if you've been sifted you need to shout because that means that you survived if you've been sifted you can shout because that means God sustains you if you have been sifted you can shout because that means that you've been secured through your sifting moments I got to go up I got to quit them Good morning, uh, greater grace. Uh, good morning, uh, VIPs. Uh, the Lord uh, sent me here on divine assignment uh, to tell somebody, don't give up uh, in your sifting. Uh, don't give out uh, in your sifting. Uh, don't throw in uh, the towel in your sifting. Uh, because one of these uh, 
I said one of these, one of these old days. When this old life is over, we go head up. We go head up to bright glory, and we go take off these old shoes. We go take off these old clothes. We go put on long white robes. We go put on golden slippers. We go put on a starry crown. We go tell him about our troubles. We go tell him how we made it, how we made it over. Do me one last one last favor and i try my best uh, to leave you alone uh, but i need you uh, to point at somebody and say neighbor come on say it like you mean it uh, say neighbor i know it get rough i know it get tough i know the hills get hard to climb but neighbor i got some good news god gonna turn around god go turn around god go turn around won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it won't he show up is there anybody here that know the lord will show up say yeah say yeah 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 oh yeah one friday they sit to jesus by hanging him on a cross on a hill called calvary i had lord knows i heard i heard that when he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder y'all know what happened he died anybody know he died died good god almighty to the sun refused to shine died to the moon just away in blood died to the earth reeled and rock like a drunk man died to the centurion said surely 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 this must be uh, the son of God uh, but that's not how the story is uh, for I had that Ellie, 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 Ellie. Sunday morning uh, he got up uh, with all power in his hand uh, and I don't know uh, what you know about him I don't know uh, what you feel about him I don't know uh, what you think about him but one thing uh, I know about him is uh, I No, he's Is he all right? I said, is he all right? If you know the man is all right, just throw your hand in the air and wave them like you don't care and say yeah I know he's a But even then, since I've been shifted, I'm being shifted to another level. Is there anybody in the room on the sound of my voice that believe you had it to another level? Say yeah, say yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yes, I am. Wow, 
what a powerful message we heard on today. Um, I hope, trust, and pray that you were blessed by the word and that as you were hearing the word preached to you, that it uh, allowed you to see yourself in Luke chapter 22, where Jesus was talking to Simon and telling him that you're in a rough patch right now. You're in a rough season right now. But the good news is, I've already prayed for you, that your faith won't fail you. And so my sisters and my brothers, I don't know what area, what phase, or what you may be going through in life right now, I have some good news for you. Your situation is not your destination, and this is not the conclusion, because God is already in the process of working things out for your good. So just remember that your sifting comes before your shifting. Partner with us. Become a part of our community. Uh, text RCGJ to 84576 and remain updated with everything that is going on here at our ministry. But then also do me a favor and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at RCGJ Ministries. And then go to our website, rcgjministries.com. It's there that you'll be able to uh, read devotionals, see my reading list, and uh, just everything that the Lord has placed upon our heart uh, to advance the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may uh, check out greatergracy.org, our church website, and then follow us also there on Facebook and Instagram at Greater Grace C, and you will be able to uh, become a part of our family of faith. I hope, trust, and pray that you will partner with us. Let us connect with you as you connect with us. If this word has been a blessing to you, and if you feel led to sow a seed, you can do so. You can sow a seed through Cash App, dollar sign RCGJ, or uh, by using the email in Zale, info at rcgjministries.com. Uh, whatever seed you want to sow, great or small, it will be greatly appreciated, and I promise you, it will go toward advancing of the kingdom. I thank you in advance for uh, your seed. I thank you in advance for what you're going to share. But just before we leave on today, let's have a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we come to you right now to tell you that we thank you for this touch of grace. We thank you for every hearer. We thank you for every viewer that has heard this word on today. And now, God, uh, as we are going forth into the world, we ask that you would continue to remind us that you have already prayed for us that our faith won't fail us. God, don't allow us to give up in our sifting moments, but God, let us remember and realize that shifting is on the way. And we will be forever grateful and thankful for everything that you are doing in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. Until next Tuesday, I want you to go with God. He'll go with you. And I'll see you for next week edition of A Touch of Grace. Go in peace. Go in love. Go in grace.